G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here. I don't want to talk about the weather, but oh my God, it flooded so badly over a two week period that it actually shorted out my observatory and plunged the house into darkness and fried the astro imaging computer. So I've been offline and I had to be offline while I had super clear moonless nights, but I'm back in action now. Today's video is about a new color palette. It's a color palette that I came up with after a thought process, which I'll describe for you in a second. But the idea is that I want to get a true color image from Narrowband. And when I figured it out, I went searching to see if anyone else was using it. And really I found just a handful of examples in the last 10, 20 years. So it's really unused and I don't know why. I think this is gonna work really well. So I'm gonna try this out. As you know, usually with narrowband, if you take a narrowband image, particularly the Hubble palette, you end up with psychedelic garbage. And it's no wonder people are a bit mistrusting of narrowband images as representations of the truth, because they do look pretty weird. Anyway, I think you're gonna love this. We cracked the code, boys. We did it. Stay tuned, and I'll slowly open my kimono and reveal my secrets to you. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you're watching Star Stuff. <laughs> Like all astronomers and astrophotographers, I never have any money left at the end of the week to spend on food and my family because I've already spent it on alcohol and astronomy equipment. So please forgive me because this video is sponsored by High Point Scientific. High Point Scientific are a New York based astronomy vendor where you can get basically any brand of astronomy equipment. They have a price match guarantee and they fully support their equipment. But the best thing of all about High Point Scientific is that every time I mention them as a sponsor of one of my videos, I get a flood of great comments from people who agree that they are better than all the other vendors. And that is reason alone for you to give them a try, especially if you're in America. So go to www.highpointscientific.com. Now there are no new color palettes under the sun. Uh, surely they've all been done before. All the combinations have been tried, right? In fact, I actually brute forced all the combinations with this tool that I wrote that would take your hydrogen, sulfur and oxygen narrowband filtered images and then combine them in every possible permutation, uh, whether that's bicolor or RGB mapping. So we're done, right? Wrong. You've probably thought to yourself as you've looked at these combinations that anything that maps hydrogen to red is probably a good start for getting a true color image because hydrogen is actually red and that's true. But even the hydrogen sulfur oxygen combination or the hydrogen oxygen sulfur combination they still look like you've taken an acid trip, right? Yeah. No, how's your mama? Ignore this terrible drug. They don't represent true color very well at all. So here's my thinking. This is a normal color image. We have a red peak, a green peak, and a blue peak. Now, if you're on a one-shot color camera, each of these are these separate filters that happen in your Bayer matrix. Or if you're using a mono camera, you might have a red filter and then a green filter and then a blue filter, but they're very broad passes. In fact, some of these passes might have flat peaks because they are so broad. Now, if we start, we know that hydrogen is red. So if we use our HA filter, we have a very narrow cut. We throw away all that other garbage, light pollution, ambient light leaking into our system, and we just have a nice narrow cut, which works particularly well for emission nebulas. The next thing we can try is oxygen. Now, obviously we can map oxygen to the blue. It's not a true blue, it's more of a teal, but we're gonna map it to blue, which is shifting it a little more this way. So we've got our red and our blue sorted out. The problem of course is sulfur because sulfur isn't green. Sulfur is actually more of an orange color that's closer to the hydrogen here. So it doesn't really give a good separation and it doesn't truly represent green very well. And that's why you end up with psychedelic garbage. So instead of using sulfur, why don't we just use green? Let's just use a broadband green filter. Obviously we don't get that nice narrow pass like we do with narrowband filters. We get more of a broad pass, but it is in the middle of the spectrum here. So we're not getting the ends of the spectrum. It's not true narrowband, but this means two thirds of our image run is going to be narrowband and we just use one broadband filter. So naturally I'm gonna call this Hago. Obviously we'll need to do some careful processing to make this work, but I think this is a good idea. So that's how I came to this particular combination. I think it's really gonna help. It has most of the advantages of narrowband, 
but you do still need that one broadband channel, which is the green channel. Thankfully, the green channel traditionally is very strong. The response is strong in cameras and the filter response is very strong as well. We should be able to get a pretty close approximation of true color. So the only thing left to do is to try it myself. And that means a nice inspiring montage of my acquisition. Now this image isn't perfect. I didn't get the focus on the off-axis guider right, so the guiding jumped around a bit and just made the stars not as round as I would like them. If you're interested in how I process my images, my Pix Insight workflow is here. I basically just calibrate and stack the images. I don't do a hell of a lot. I did a little bit of star reduction. In this final image, I also have no noise reduction, which I think is pretty good and a pretty good testament to the results that you can get out of the QHY268M camera. It really is brilliant. So other thoughts about using this Hago palette. Green is a rare color in space. It's not one that we typically see. It's an impossible color physically from stars. So you can be assured that if you have green in your image, unless you're imaging a comet or something like that, uh, it's probably not a real color. So you do need to pull the green back. And when you're doing that balancing of colors in your post-processing, uh, use SCNR noise reduction, which will pull the green right back. Same for purple. If you do have too much purple, uh, you can invert the image and then apply SCNR there, and that will reduce that purple go as well. So you come back to those natural blues and reds. I really like the way the hydrogen has that very typical hydrogen salmon pink result. When you are doing your color balancing, use the background of the image, the areas that you would traditionally associate with the gray or black areas of space as your anchor. As long as those areas are quite neutral and they're not biased towards purple or blue or whatever, uh, then you know you're on the right track for a true color image. When I compare the results to the same object taken with color, I can see that the orange stars definitely are less pronounced. And in fact, the separation between the blue and the orange stars are less pronounced. However, the separation is still there. And maybe with a bit of work, this technique could be enhanced so that we can truly get a true color result. Before I sign off, I just wanna ask the community now to have a go at the Hago color palette. See if you can get a similar true color result. And I'm especially interested in seeing if this works from light polluted areas, and I'd like to see more examples of it as well. So if you do try this new palette, tag me in the image. I wanna see some examples. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. <laughs>